Now there's Mike Wilds, that's a famous crash helmet, former BRM Formula One driver. And Mike still racing regularly, mainly in the Brick Car Series. Seemed to have a problem with the uh, 20 car. And we'll see him later on in the Group C race. Of course, uh, he's done many, many a mile at Le Mans, actually. Yes, yeah, so, well, that's Steve Russell's car. Yeah, Mike Wilde's been a, a professional racing driver for many years after his Formula 1 experience and Formula 5000. He moved on and did a, quite a lot of sports car racing. Now then, into the infield area. The two list is getting very close yep. indeed. And just about getting away with it. That was Steve Gibson just losing a position through the infield area but Mike Wilde's out of the car still got his crash helmet on but uh, yeah, well, hello, smiling <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they've got a problem there just to put these listers in context we talked about the Jaguar D-types they're mainly from the, the mid 50s and they were first position well Sittner had a bobble Sittner had a bit of a bobble and a wobble and he left the door open he probably glanced in that mirror just to his left hand side on the stalk over the top of the windscreen and he thought the better of closing the door and damaging anything oh my goodness me that is an enormous engine blow up from the Jaguar well that's gonna be expensive oh, and look at the steam coming out of the car or is it coming out of the driver? Or is it coming well, out both. of his wallet? Yeah, well, oh, what a shame. Now then, that was uh, John Chisholm, Rob Newell car, and that marshal may well arrive with an extinguisher. I think the driver doesn't want to look forward to, uh, to catch up with what is underneath. But Toby, we can go down to the pits now with Diana Binks. I say uh, your race was ended a bit too abruptly there. What happened? Yes, it was great fun. I've not driven the little Elwood before, and it was really great fun having a lot of uh, dices with people. Uh, and it lost third and fourth gear, unfortunately. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. It is. Um, it was a bit of a struggle to cope. It must have had at least 100 horsepower, I think. And so it was. Uh, that sounds like somebody's had an accident, unfortunately. Um, no, great fun. Uh, it's a bit of a contrast because I'm going to drive a 700 brake horsepower Porsche in a race later on. So um, it's <laughs> it was quite fun. Okay, thanks for the moment. I'll hand back to you guys. I think there's something happening out there on the track. Yeah, it looks like there's yellow flags in the background whilst you are having your interview and we've got a change of the lead. Graham Dodd has come into the lead as we've got the safety car out. We believe there was a, an accident on the home straight whilst Diana was catching up with Mike Wilde. He mentioned it that he could hear tyre squealing and such like, but Graham Dodd has just taken the lead. As the Once spoke to one of the programme managers, he said, we had a notion of budget, but it didn't have a cap on it. That's what Mercedes were doing in 89. Let's go back to the 43 Porsche 962. Seventh position for Henry now, and this has been a very, very good drive indeed. And it gives you, John, some idea of what it's like inside these cars. I mean, Rob will attest to this in a moment's time. It, you know, all the muck and bullets, all the midges at this time of night, all the bits of oil, bits of rubber, of course. We've had two tyre blow-ups already here at Silverstone. It may be the modern Silverstone is a little bit slower rather than the early 70s big oh, booming circuit, look but that. it's still quick. These cars, as you well know, John, you've really got to take a deep breath and hang on. Justin Law, probably that's why the reason that these brakes have been have been smoking when Justin Law came into the pits is that he's absolutely thrashing the car as quick, if not quicker, than your uh, than your everyday professional driver. I think I think you're absolutely right there. Let's just look. That is the car that he's battling with for posi po for uh, position. This is the 12 car of Andrew Haddon in the Spice SE90 as he is going through sixth position here. That's the sixth car. Seventh is our camera car, and it is gaining and gaining and gaining inexorably. And this has been a great drive by Henry, and any second now, Andrew is gonna to have to do a little bit of defending. Just over 53 minutes to go. We are starting to come down to a full tank of fuel to the end of little wires hanging down at the back as if the fog lights have fallen off or something similar. Seem to be slowing that car down. Look at that Porsche, absolutely gorgeous. There is the Advan car. That's uh, the seven machine, isn't it? The, uh, the Mark Sumter machine. And that car, I think, has only ever been raced once outside of Japan before it came here this weekend. 
The flow rate might be, I don't know, 85 litres per second. So it takes about 35 seconds to refuel the car. Then, and only then, are you, have you then got four guys able to touch the car, service it, clean the windscreen, put on some new tyres, and then the driver can go in, as we've got Mike Wilds going in the Pearman car. This, of course, the pink Porsche, Rob. Mike Wilds, a driver with vast array of experience, eight times Le Mans driver. He's raced in Formula One for two years and also has 7,000 hours of helicopter